We will learn today about basic properties of groups. Some basic properties. We start by this theorem. Assume we have a group G and elements A, B, C that are in G. Now we agree that if we have G, a group, with operation star, we will write a b in a place of a star b so whenever we see a b that means it is an operation between a and b according to the group operation okay now one here says g has unique identity element we know a group has an identity element and here we will prove it is only uh, uh, one identity element it is unique and to prove that uh, usually to prove something is unique we assume there are uh, two representation of that thing and then uh, we prove these two representations are essentially the same so we will say let e1 e2 uh, be identities of g now since E1 is an identity, then if we multiply it with E2, we must get E2. And when I say multiply here, I mean operation. Okay? And E2 is an identity. So if we uh, multiply it by E1, we get E1. And then we get it so quickly that E1 is equal to E2. Okay? Bar 2, constellation law, a very basic property. But it is important it says that if a times b is equal to a times c then we can cancel the a from both sides and get b equals c and uh, we can do that because or uh, i mean here in other part if a comes to be at the right then same thing happen okay and to prove uh part uh, b2 Okay, let's say, assume, let's write the hypothesis, A times B equals A times C. Now, since A is an element in G, then A has an inverse. Then there exists, there exists an element, say uh, it is D, belongs to G such that d times a equals the identity so now multiply both sides of this equation multiply it from the right the left sorry by d so multiply this by d multiply this by d and now since we are in a group we can use associativity so we can multiply d times a times b and here t times a times c but dt uh, d times a is the identity so we get b equals to c and the same goes for uh, this part same process okay now in part uh, 3 it says uh, each element of G has a unique inverse. We know that uh, every element in G has an inverse. Here we will say it is a unique inverse. So 3. Assume, uh, as usual, to prove something is unique, we will assume it has two representations, and we show these two representations are essentially the same, represent the same element. So let's assume A has two inverse. Uh, assume uh, there exists two elements uh, call them D C and G such that D times A is the identity and C times A is the identity but this gives us D times A equals c times a and then uh, by part 2 
we get which do the constellation for a here we get d equals c now since the identity is uh, the sorry the uh, inverse is unique i go up here inverse is unique so we will write inverse of a we will denote it uh, a to power negative one that means always the inverse regardless of the operation we are using um, we will denote the inverse this way okay another property of uh, groups in here it says the inverse of a times b is b inverse times a inverse so how we prove that so it says the inverse of this element so what is the inverse of this element it is another element that if i multiply with it i get the identity so let's try that it's b inverse a inverse so we will prove the theorem if this equality is uh, correct now using associativity this will be can be written this way but this equals then a times identity times a inverse which is a times a inverse which is the identity so good so this happens and uh, this proves part a for part two we want to show that the inverse of this element is a so we multiply this element with something to get identity clearly it is a so simply we will say the inverse of the inverse of an element is the element itself so this is uh, easy and quick they are uh, elementary properties that we uh, are gonna see today okay here we assume we have uh, a group G and an element inside the group and M N are integers integers they have nothing to do with the group by itself they are integers now uh, let's say here what do we mean let me explain it to the right what do you do we mean by raising an element uh, go ahead assume we have an element uh, a belong to G and an integer what we mean by a to power n we mean we will make operation with a uh, itself n times so it means copying a making operation with a n times it is the operation of the group n times so n is an integer now this theorem says and you know this is as a basic properties a time a to power n uh, uh, and then I say operation a to power n that means I take a and uh, will operate it with itself m plus n and for sa same thing for this bar so I will leave it to you just to play with it so if I make a to power m then I get an element in the group then I take that element and make operation with itself in times that's the same as if we make operation with a with itself m in times so using these notations here uh, you can easily prove these properties okay now an order of elements order of an element this is an uh, important uh, concept in algebra what do we mean by uh, order, of an uh, order of an element let's take an element a in some group we will say it has finite order if a to power k equals the identity for some positive integer k okay that means i take a from a group multiply it by itself i get a square multiply it again I get a to power 3 one more time I get a to power 4 again a to power 5 and so on and I keep doing that if I get an identity as a result of one of these multiplications then I will say a has a finite order see 
it happens like a to power 7 equals the identity then I will say a has a finite order so I will keep multiplying a with itself and see if I get an identity in this process if I do then I will say a has a finite order and what is the order of a is the smallest positive integer that gives me an identity out of the process that I already talked about like I take an a raise it to power a square a to power uh, a to power 3 a to power 4 a to power 5 till I get the identity at the first time then that many of powers is the order of a it is the smallest power of a that produces the identity and uh, this order the order of a so we're defining here the order of an element and it is denoted uh, this way so uh, order of an element a is denoted this way that means the number i raise as a power of a then i get the identity but what happened what we say if we d if if th that does not happen if i keep raising a to solve multiplying a with the solve again and again and again but the identity will never come out as a result then i will say a has infinite order a has infinite order if a to power k will never equals the identity for any positive integer k so to make to make that clear we must see some examples let's go here okay example number one if we go to the real uh, multiplicative group of non-zero real numbers that means we are in r star and uh, we have usual multiplication so let's go to two so two to power anything to power any integer will never be zero uh, I'm sorry I'm sorry the identity here let me uh, our identity here is one so uh, a to power k where k is a positive integer positive integer the result will never be equal one like 2 to power 1 is 2 2 to power 2 is 4 2 to power 3 is 8 and so on so we will say that 2 has infinite order uh, inside uh, this group it is it has an infinite order here okay example number two let's call this element sigma it is from s3 it sends 1 to 3 2 to 1 3 to 2 this is a permutation and we are claiming here that the order of sigma this says order of sigma is 3 why is that happening this is sigma square if we multiply sigma with itself as we learned this come out to be the result and if we multiply sigma with itself three times we get this one goes to one two goes to two three goes to three and this is the identity and we denoted by i i remember okay and so uh, the order of sigma this is the smallest power of sigma that gives us uh, identity okay a uh, three the identity element uh, has order one like if we have e e to power one is e so we got the identity out of the identity by raising it to power one so if i want to write it here this says the identity element the order of identity element is one okay now uh this example the following example uh deals with uh uh z4 z12 sorry now when i when we see that c12 see it, it says here the additive group z12 so we are in this group z12 and we are under addition modulo 12 remember when you see z12 when you are given z12 as a group you will never think it is multiplication because this is not a group not a group okay now the operation here is uh, plus so notice that 8 to power 3 that means 8 plus 8 now I said raising an element to power means I will 
make that operation uh, of that element with itself uh, to that power operation now the operation here is addition so 8 to power 3 me I means I will make the operation with the three copies of 8 and the operation is addition so I have 8 plus 8 plus 8 which is 24 module 12 that equals 0 what is 0 0 is the identity this is the identity uh, identity of this group of Z12 under addition the identity here is 0 not 1 okay one more example 5 this group L equals plus minus 1 plus minus I uh, we have seen this L let me rewrite it here it is 1 minus 1 I and minus I we have seen this is a group under multiplication of complex numbers where I square equals uh, I square equals negative 1 so uh, the order the order of I is 4 because if there is uh, I square is negative 1 I to power 3 is negative I I to power 4 is uh, one so I will write the order of I equals four and same thing uh, prove that the order of negative I is uh, four also we will notice out of this last example uh, the following if you notice uh, I to power 10 is uh, let me rewrite that here i to power 10 is the same as i to power 4 then this is raised to power 2 so i got i to power 8 and this is i to power 2 so this is i to power 10 but we know this is this equals 1 this equals 1 we just have seen it it is here so this will equals 1 square which is 1 so i get i square so what happened here I started with i to power 10 and it came out to be the same result as i square and here it is i to power 10 and i square uh, are equal is that by accident here it, say, it says that notice that this power here and this power here they are congruent here they are congruent modulo 4 what is 4? remember 4 is the order of i oh ok so if two integers are congruent modulo the order of i so let me say I have an integer and I have another integer before that let me say I have an element a in the group ok now I have an integer and another integer and I noticed that these two integers are congruent modulo the order of a then a to power this and a to power this will give the same element this is what we noticed and this is actually is a stated um, this is stated uh, here part 2 and w w it will be stated more precisely in a theorem we will see a little while but let's go for this theorem first let G be a group and uh, A an element of G now if A has infinite order then A to power K will be always distinct like A A square A to power 3 a to power 4, a to power 5, and so on. All, uh, all these elements are distinct. No two of them are the same. This happens whenever A has infinite order. Okay? Part 2 says here, if I get A to power I, this is A to power I, and A to power J, let me write them here. A to power I, if I get two powers of j two different powers of j i 
i does not equal j so uh, two different powers of j but give the same result so i mean a power i is a power j is a power i'm i'm, so, I'm sorry two two different powers of a i is a power and j is a power so two different powers of a gives the same result that means a has a finite order a has a finite order and in a little while we will see more precise results okay now let's prove it we'll, we will prove part two and come back to part one okay now if a to power i is the same as to power j then simply that means uh, okay we may assume here let me say we may assume that i is greater than uh, j not equal okay we can assume that uh, then a to power i minus j is the identity okay so we got a power of a that give us the identity so a has an a power that takes it to the identity so a has a finite order It might be that a i minus j, it might be that this power is the order of j and mine not. Okay? Now, and we will see it in a little while. Now, proof of, of 1. Proof is of 1. If you go back here and do the contrapositive of 2. The contrapositive of 2. So, the negation of this will be a has infinite order and the negation of this a to power i will never will never equals a to power g for any i g distinct so if a has infinite order then powers of, of a will be distinct so this is part one so part one is the contrapositive of two so it is equivalent to two so we proved two then that means we proved one okay okay here we reach what i uh, talked about uh, more details about the power when two powers of uh, a power i and power j give the same result that means i and j are congruent modulo the order of a so we will see that now so assume we have an element in a group j that has finite order n so order of a equals n and this is finite now to prove one now one says if a to power k equals identity then n divides k okay what that means so in case you don't see it clearly part one says if a to power k gives the identity that means n must divide k what is n in the order of a now what this uh, part is saying we know since n is the order of a we know that a to power n is the identity okay now the question is the following if i find another integer say k so that a to power k is the identity so what is the relation between k and n then we will say n will divide that k so i will say the order of the element always divides any power that takes a to the identity okay it is not only the smallest the order of a is it is not only the smallest power of power that takes a to the identity but the order of a is also uh, divides any other power that takes a to the identity okay and let's prove that let's prove this direction first because it is uh, easier uh, it says uh, the hypothesis here uh, says assume n divides k uh, then 
that means uh, k equals n times d for some d positive integer and that means now we want to prove a to power k is the identity a to power k is simply a to power n raised to power d but a to power n is the identity and we we called it one e the identity which is e to power d and this is e so we got a to power k is uh, e now to prove part two uh, sorry no no I mean the other direction of part one now our assumption is assume a to power k is the identity uh, for some integer k now we want to prove remember what we want now want n divides k okay and divides k remember n is the smallest I will go back up there and say this is the smallest power that takes a to the identity okay now let's see what can we do here um, okay let me go up here a little okay now I will see right what I will do I will divide k divide k by n I get a result q plus some remainder and you know the remainder is the remainder r is less than the uh, less than n and it might be zero okay now if I compute now e is a to power k but I will use this for k and this is a to power n to power q by a to power r but we know this equals the identity so that means identity to power q which is the identity times a to power r and this is a to power r so what I got here let me see I got a to power r equal the identity oh but I already said but n is the smallest integer such that a to power n equals the identity and r is less than n how could that happen so I cannot allow this to happen so I, I am forced to choose this so we must have r to equal zero now if we have r equal zero we go back here if r equals zero that means k equals q n and that means n divides k and this is what we wanted so we proved uh, bart uh, uh, one now to prove part two this is the, the part I have already talked about so I will try to okay I will copy uh, uh, part two there and then we will prove it we need to see it so part two says if it happens that two powers of I gives the same element that means these two powers are congruent modulo the order n and this is goes the other direction if two integers or two powers are congruent modulo n then they give the same uh, element as powers of i of a sorry now to prove that let's start from here a to power i equals a to power j and uh, that means a to power so I can assume uh, uh, 
i is greater than j if j is greater than i just we swap the rules that means a minus a j equals the identity okay a to power i minus j is the identity now by bar 2 now bar 2 it says if a is raised to some power um, I'm say uh, let me say it more simpler if some power takes a to the identity that then that power must be divisible by n the order and that power now is i minus j so n must divide that power oh, okay but, but that means n uh, j and i are uh, congruent module n because n divides the difference between them okay now to do the other direction is simply just go backwards if i and j are congruent module n that means n minus n divides uh, I minus J then going this way also by bar 2 because bar 2 is uh, going two direction we get a to I minus J equals the identity which means this and then uh, we got the two direct directions of part 2 okay now the last part of the theorem uh, if uh, if n okay let me copy it here Part three of the theorem says if n is can be written now remember n is the order of a now now I am assuming here it is uh, a product of two integers t times d now what I what if I take a to power t okay this is not the identity indeed it is not the identity because the smallest power that take a to the identity is n and t is is less than n so it is not the identity so it is another element now the question is what is the order of that uh, other element uh, now uh, we will see the order of this new element has order as order D okay so this is uh, what Bart uh, th uh, 3 says let's go back to it and have a look okay and it is assuming uh, D is greater than 1 otherwise the decomposition of n it does not uh, is trivial so I need T to be greater than 1 and D to be greater than 1 okay so let's prove this we want to show that uh, this element has an order d first thing we do we must make sure that if we raise uh, this element to power d then we get the identity and it does indeed and then this is the identity so raising that element to do to d gives the identity this is the first part of proving an order of some element take that integer the order and raise it to that element you get the identity so fine but we are not done yet we need to show if there is other integer that takes this element to the identity then that other integer must be greater than d or divisible by d so that d is the smallest integer that takes that element to the identity so we will assume now let me write what I just said assume a to power t to power k remember we're talking about this element here the order of this element so I will assume if I raise it here it is if I raise it to some power k I get the identity I, I want to show that k is greater than d or d is greater than uh, k now that means a to powers t k equals identity but now uh, by uh, by part um, which part by what part one yes by part one we must have that n divides 
TK right because uh, the order of A is N and TK here is an integer that takes A to E so N must divide that integer so N divides TK so we will write it we will write uh, N times R equals TK uh, for some integer r so now let's go back see what happened uh, we have n times r so let me uh, write them here n times r now I will use this here for n it is td this is t d times r okay and uh, an R is T K so I got that now cancel the T from here the T from here and then we get K equals the R oh, okay so that means D divides K or D is less than K so indeed now what happened first thing we did uh, a to power t raised to d gives the identity and if there is any any other integer k that takes a to power t to the identity then d must be less than that k and therefore uh, this proves uh, therefore the order of a to power t is d Indeed. Okay.